Right. So if you have read and understood considering a surgical pathology station, kindly tell me how would you address the patient's concern? Uh, here I would uh, explain to the patient that the patient is having an ulcer in his uh, stomach and uh, uh, pro patient also ha has increased blood calcium levels which could be responsible for the ulcer. Can you define the term ulcer please? Uh, ulcer uh, is defined as the any discontinuity in the mucous membrane or skin uh, due to the disintegration of the surface epithelial cells. Good. What are the causes of ulcer formation? Uh, for the uh, peptic ulcer, the risk factors are uh, uh, infection with uh, Helicobacter pylori, yes. and, uh, drugs and NSAIDs and steroids and uh, smoking, uh, alcohol yes. consumption. Okay. Uh, if you can tell me what type of organism is uh, H. pylori? Uh, it is a gram-negative, uh, micro-aerophilic, and uh, uh, spiral bacteria. In which part of the intestine it is most... Uh, uh, duodenum. Okay. Can you tell me, uh, how you've taken the biopsy, and uh, what else would you advise to the patient for the purpose of management of the condition? Uh, culture of the biopsy and uh, yes, we can also do testing for Helicobacter pylori by uh, a C a Campylo by a CLO test, ma'am. Uh, yes, where we, we test the production of urease by the organism. Yes, uh, when the biopsy mm -hmm. sample is placed in a medium containing urea and phenol, and yes. uh, if the organism is pr produces urea, it converts. Uh, Produces urea, it converts urea into ammonia, and there is change of uh, color to uh, red, which indicates a positive test. All right. What medication can be given for the eradication of H. pylori? Uh, the medication uh, treatment involves uh, a seven day course of uh, uh, a proton pump inhibitor twice daily and uh, clarithromycin 250 mg uh, twice daily and metronidazole 400 mg twice daily. Okay. For seven days. All right. Uh, are there any precautions patient must take while patient are taking these medications? I, yes, ma'am. Patient should uh, take the proton pump inhibitors before food and uh, patient should uh, avoid uh, uh, spicy food. Okay. What about the milk and dairy products? Uh, the patient should uh, uh, take uh, calcium or milk and dairy products uh, um, there should be a gap between the consumption of the proton pump inhibitor and the dairy product as it interferes with the absorption. Can you tell me what are the common causes of hypercalcemia in this particular patient? Uh, the hypercalcemia in this case could be due to a uh, parathyroid uh, adenoma or hyperplasia, okay. or it can also be due to any uh, malignancy associated uh, hypercalcemia. All right. What are the what are the things uh, or the conditions you have to keep in your mind when you are treating a patient with hypercalcemia? Uh, firstly, if, uh, we have to give IV fluids to stabilize the uh, to prevent any arrhythmias. Then okay. uh, we have to decrease the calcium levels by giving either uh, intravenous bisphosphonates such as alendronate or risedronate. Uh, then. Residronate or pamidronate, and then uh, also we can give uh, IV cal uh, intravenous uh, calcitonin. Okay, uh, I was more likely looking for an answer because because of hypercalcemia, there is more risk of uh, urinary tract infections. So you have to be, and okay. uh, these leads to the renal stones. Okay, can you tell me? You said it's more commonly because of the parathyroid uh, glands. So can you please tell me where are they localized? Or where are they located? The parathyroid glands are located uh, behind each lobe of the thyroid gland. Okay. Uh, How would you confirm your diagnosis since they are not so visible? Uh, we but can localize yes. with uh, in, uh, imaging such as a, a technician antenna and system EB scan. Can okay. we done to localize the glands? Uh, 
just suppose you've done your biopsy and uh, you've got the report that the patient is suffering from parathyroid adenoma. What do you understand by that? It is a benign th tumor arising from the parathyroid gland. Yes. Uh, How should that be managed? Uh, parathyroid adenoma would require excision of the tumor, ma'am. Okay. Um, uh, do you need bilateral neck exploration, exploration or I, I, uh, just the parathyroidectomy would be enough? I will get back to this later. Okay. All right. Can you tell me, uh, right, during surgery, if you've taken the frozen section, uh, in order to know what? The extent of the spread, ma'am, uh, so that we can uh, do proper complete resection. Okay. Uh, interoperatively, we can decide the margins of excision. All right. All right. Okay, if you've taken the frozen section, then you decide to do histopathology of the report. What should what kind of result should you expect? What kind of result, ma'am? Yes. What are you expecting? What are you looking for in the lab report, histopathology report? Uh, any uh, dysplastic uh, features or uh... Any features of the malignancy uh, or tissue uh, invasion of the surrounding tissue? Okay, just suppose your report contains oxophilic cells. Uh, what would you think of the report? It belongs to uh, what type of? Yes. Uh, parathyroid tissue. Uh, it could be an oxophil uh, tumor man, of the parathyroid. Okay. All right. Can you tell me what are the types of hyperparathyroidism? Uh, hyperparathyroidism can be primary uh, hyperparathyroidism, secondary hyperparathyroidism, which occurs in a chronic renal failure, whereas primary, which occurs due to a tumor or a parathyroid hyperplasia. Then tertiary hyperparathyroidism, which occurs after long standing uh, um, secondary hyperparathyroidism due to autonomous uh, functioning of the parathyroid glands. How should hypercalcemia be managed? Uh, first, uh, first thing which should be done is IV fluids uh, to prevent any arrhythmias. Then, uh, uh, to uh, decrease of the blood calcium levels by uh, giving I uh, bisphosphonates, either IV pamidronate or uh, risidronate, and then we can also give uh, calcitonin. Man. Okay, good. Uh, right. Okay. Uh, I wanted to know. Most of the topics you've already covered. Yes. Okay. Uh, what uh, if I want to just for the sake of discussion want to know, does it make any difference okay. if uh, high, uh, H. pylori is more abundant in stomach rather than in um, duodenum? Would the management or treat duration of treatment differ? Or would be the same. I am not sure about this one. Yeah. You can think if it's in uh, stomach. Yes, it should so be a longer treatment might be needed. I think ma if it's in uh, duodenum. Yes, in the stomach. is more, or in the stomach. Think. On one side, there is hydrochloric acid. On the other side, uh, because it it's in duodenum, so distance is more. So how would that affect the duration of treatment? Uh, or would long, that be the same treatment you'll give? Longer treatment, uh, longer course might be needed. So we'll discuss this tomorrow. It's your homework. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thanks.